Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Tanika and in today's video I am going to be showing you some of the tips and tricks that I have learnt from the YouTube pros as well as some professional makeup artists. I've been using these techniques in my routine for a while now so I really wanted to share them with you. On one side of my face I'll be showing you the new tips and tricks and the other side will be how I used to do it. If you enjoy this video while you're watching, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let's get into it. All right, let's bring it in, shall we? Get a good look at this skin. Oh, as you can see, I've got some uh, big pimps going on today. So I'm just going to go ahead and cover them up. I do have a full video going over how I cover my redness and my breakouts. So I'll link that down below if you wanna go watch it. All right, so starting out with some tips and tricks from Robert Welsh, everybody's new favorite makeup artist and YouTuber. Isn't he just the best? He is just so knowledgeable and all his information is super useful. He's cute, he's funny, I just love watching him. So the first tip I learned from Robert is to not take your foundation up so high under your eyes. All you're doing is putting unnecessary product in that really delicate area and it's just going to look at more, look at what did I just say? <laughs> And it's just going to make it look more cakey and crepey. So on my right side, I'm going to take the foundation right up under my eyes and blend it all the way there. Whereas on this side, I'm only gonna bring it to about here. So now that the foundation is applied, you can see that this side looks rather scary under the eyes, but the concealer is going to be more than enough to cover that. Whereas on this side, I've just got an extra layer of product that I don't necessarily need. Now, when it comes to concealer, I'm sure we've all heard Robert's ways. I don't follow it exactly, but what I have learned from this is that less is more. I don't need to go in with this big triangle of concealer because it's just too much. Especially for me, I do have quite a lot of fine lines under my eyes, so too much product just settles into them and can make it look very crepey, and it makes me look much older. So I'll be going in with my L'Oreal Infallible More Than Concealer. I bloody love this stuff. It's super full coverage. On the right side, I'm going to go in with a nice big triangle. And on the left side, I'm just going to pop a bit in the inner corner and on the outside. So if I bring you in, you can see that there is great coverage on both sides, but on this side, the concealer has already started to settle into my fine lines. Applying too much concealer can also affect your makeup look if you are using it to highlight your face. For me, because I'm so fair, I don't really use concealer to highlight. I just like to use a concealer that matches my skin tone or is maybe just a shade lighter, but I don't go too excessive because can you really get much lighter than this? But if you do use concealer to highlight, just keep that in mind because if you're bringing it all the way down here as opposed to just a little bit under your eyes, it is going to affect the way it looks on your face and what points are highlighted. Next is something you hear Robert just absolutely hates and it's baking under the eyes. Now, I have never really been a huge baker under the eyes. I have tried it out a few times and I find it always leaves my under eyes looking heavy, dry, and really crepey. So I do like to apply powder though with a sponge and just lightly dip it into the loose powder and set under my eyes. If I don't go in too heavy with the powder, it still looks really nice. But I also saw a video of Sir John doing Desi Perkins makeup and he is Beyonce's makeup artist. And he went in with this L'Oreal Infallible Powder. It's called the Magic Loose Powder. And he used a small brush and just lightly applied it under the eyes. And it looked absolutely flawless. I had previously tried this powder out as well with the whole sponge technique I was just talking about. And it was far too heavy. It just did not look good, even though I went in with a lighter hand. 
So when I changed it up and used the brush, wow, what, what a difference, seriously. So today I'm going to use that technique, but I am going to be using my Models Prefer Mineral Finishing Veil Powder. So on this side, I'm going to heavily apply the powder under the eyes, whereas on this side, I'm going to lightly apply it with a brush. So if I were to apply it with my sponge, I would literally take that much product. But what I'm going to do for the purpose of kind of baking and applying too much is really pack my sponge full of powder and pack it under there. Oh, it looks so bad already. Oh my God. Oh my God. Then I've just got this brush here by Focalore. It come in a brush set, it doesn't have a name on it, but it's just a pointed powder brush. I've got a tiny bit of product on there and I'm just going to dust that under the eyes. I also like to get around the side of my eye here because when I smile, I get a lot of lines and my makeup can settle into there. So I make sure I set that area. All right, let's zoom it in again and get a load of this. Look how crepey that under eye is compared to this one. As I said, I do have fine lines, so they're not going to be perfectly smooth, but the difference between this eye where I packed on the powder and this eye, come on. Next for the face, I've been watching some videos from Jamie Genevieve and Alexandra Anel, I'm pretty sure her name is, about bronzer and blush placement. So this is something that I have been experimenting with and seeing how the placement of these products can actually make a difference to the structure of my face. So for bronzer, I have been paying more attention to keeping it on this upper part of my cheek instead of just bringing it all the way down and also making sure that the brush I'm using isn't too big. The brushes I've always used for bronzer have been on the smaller side. I really love this one here. It's the 126 Lux Cheek Finish by Zoeva. And then lately I've been using this large angled contour brush by Sigma. So here is how big they are for size reference. And so listening to their techniques, what they're recommending is not using brushes that are around about this big. So if I just compare, you can see here that these two brushes are going to give you much more precise placement of your product as opposed to these. So using a big brush like this and just carelessly putting bronzer on, you're not really placing the bronzer where the sun is naturally going to hit your face. Whereas using a smaller brush like this, you can get right in that cheekbone and just carefully place it along the hairline and under the jaw as well if you like to put it there. I'm going to go in with my Fenty Sunstalker bronzer in the shade In The Sun beautiful shade for super fair skin. So on the right side, I've got some bronzer on my blush and I'm just going to carelessly dust that all around. Then on the left side, I'm going to be using my angled brush and I'm going to start by placing this in the contours of my cheeks and lightly brushing it back and forth. If I were contouring, I would be using a much cooler tone product to really get that shadow, but using a bronzer and placing it directly in the cheekbone there is still going to give you a lot of shape to the face without having to use a specific contouring product. And then going to lightly bring that up the side of my face and onto my hairline just to add a bit more warmth. And then with whatever's left on the brush, I'm just going to apply that directly to my jaw, just for a little bit of shape and warmth. So as you can see on this side, I've just got a little bit of bronzer here. It's placed very strategically. It does make my cheekbone look quite structured. Whereas on the right side, you can just see this bronze everywhere. I know this pimple is very distracting as well, so it doesn't help. <laughs> but it doesn't look structured at all and it just kind of looks splotchy and messy. Same kind of deal for blush. It does come down to the brushes that you were using. So these two here are some of my favorites when it comes to powder blush. 
This is the 132 Lux Powder Finish by Zoeva. And then this one here is the 127 Lux Sheer Cheek. And this one is cut on more of an angle. So these are both quite tiny brushes. I'll just compare them to the bronzer ones for reference. And then this brush here is by Real Techniques. As you can see, it's a lot bigger. So you're going to get a messier placement of your brush. Blush. And then when it comes to placement, I usually put my blush just all on the apples of my cheek and then bring it up. But lately I've been trying to just put it on this higher part of my cheekbone. And I find that it gives my cheeks more of a lifted look. And it's just not as messy as when I have the blush all over the apples of my cheeks. Now, blush is one of my favorite products. I feel as though it really brings that life back to my really fair skin. So I do rely on it heavily. So I've just been playing with the placements and seeing what I like most. So let me just show you what it can look like in those two different positions. I'm going to be using the Maybelline Fit Me Blush in the shade Coral. Another little tip actually, if you've got breakouts, Try not to use a blush that has a shimmer or a sheen to it because all it does is accentuate those breakouts. Try to use a matte blush if you do have a lot of breakouts on your cheeks. This blush does have a sheen to it, so you'll see that these uh, breakouts here are going to look quite <laughs> up in your business. So with the big brush, I'm just going to pop that all over the cheeks, bring it right onto the apples. And then on the other side, I'm going to be using the Zoeva 132 brush and not bringing it down as low onto the apples of my cheeks. So the difference here, this side looks much more lifted, whereas I feel like this side looks rather dragged down and heavy due to the blush placement. Another area that I have been experimenting with are the brows. So I'm sure you've seen everyone do soap brows for a long time now. It was never really a trend I got on board with, but I recently saw Alexandra do a video about brows and hers are quite sparse as well. And just seeing how beautiful they looked, I was like, all right, I need to try this because as you can see, I don't have a lot going on. They are tinted at the moment, so they look a lot more there than usual, but my arches are quite sparse. They're just, they need some work, okay? And usually I can go quite overboard with the pencil or the pomade because you just like keep going and then you gotta match them and <laughs> you know how it is. But anyway, I recently purchased the Patrick Tar Shaping Wax. Now, this you don't need. I don't need it either. Just get a bar of soap, okay? That's all we need here. If you don't have a product like this or a bar of soap, just go in with a brow gel that has quite a strong hold to it and pop that through your brows first before you go in with another product. So anyway, I get some spray, spray it in, get my spoolie, rub it in, and I brush my brows up with this product get all the hairs coated there so they're looking nice and hairy and bushy because that is the vibe I'm going for. And then I use the other end of my spoolie to just flatten the brows down. And then any that are a bit too crazy, I just brush, brush them back down. Get into place there, thank you. So while I let this brow set and before I go in with any other product, I'm just going to do my other brow, how I was previously doing them. So I've got here the Maybelline Brow Ultra Slim Pencil, which I freaking love, but this is a darker color. So this is soft brown. I'm going to brush my brows up with the spoolie and then just fill in the brows. So I like to draw underneath first. Lightly fill in the front here. And then draw the top of the brow. And as you can see, I've got quite a bit of arch to fill in there. So I've matched the pencil to the shade of my brows. And as you can see, it's just very bold 
and dark because I've tried to fill in a lot of area. So now on this side, I'm also going to be using a Maybelline Brow Ultra Slim Pencil, but this is in the shade Blonde. Now this shade is a lot lighter than my current brow, but it's going to give me a much softer finish on the front here. So I'll do the same thing and I'll draw underneath. I'm also not going to take this all the way down my tail because I do have a few hairs there, so I'm not going to completely fill that in with a pencil. As you can see, the front of this brow is just so much lighter and natural, and it kind of has that more ombre effect by using the lighter pencil. Next, I'm going in with this Emco Beauty Feather Touch Brow Pen. If you want to change your brow game, you need to get yourself a brow pen. These things are freaking amazing. I know there's one by Urban Decay, MAC, Glossier has one. I just heard Flower Beauty come out with one. So there are a few options out there. Now this shade is darker than the pencil I used, but what it does is it just draws light little strokes that look like real hairs. So instead of having this bold brow look, I'm going to have a nice hairy, bushy brow look. So well, let me show you. So instead of filling the tail of my brow in with the pencil, I'm just going to draw a few more hair like strokes in there. And then for the arch, I'm just going to lightly flick the pen to fill that area in. For the front of my brow, I'm just going to do a few light strokes so that it looks nice and hairy. And then again, just fill in the top of my brow with small, small strokes. So as you can see, this brow has ended up being quite dark as well, but it doesn't look as bold and threatening and scary as this brow does. The last tip I haven't really put into practice, but I just wanted to have a chat about it because I noticed that Robert Welsh talks a lot about using eye primers instead of concealers. And I have always been a concealer as an eye primer kind of gal, but he says that concealers contain oil. Therefore, it's going to become oily on your lid and break up your eye makeup. So if you have any eye primers that you recommend, I would preferably like one that covers up the discoloration, which is why I like to use a concealer because you get that nice blank canvas. But if you have any eye primers that you recommend that cover up the discoloration and just keep your eyeshadow lasting all day, then please leave me a comment down below because I would love to try it out and give that technique a try. All right, guys, well, that is all for today's video. If you enjoyed watching, please give it a thumbs up as it really supports my channel. And let me know down below if you use any of these tips and tricks or what else you have learned from the pros because I would love to know for myself and test them out. If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would take a look around and consider subscribing. You can also come follow me on Instagram. Otherwise, I hope you're all having a fabulous day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.